Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about heart failure and some of the basics about the heart failure. So we're going to start with the picture one, two, and then we will go to a higher level. We'll talk about the pressure volume loop, which I think we all hate. We might have done it in the med school, but I will try to come to it once we have a little basic concept so that it is easier to understand uh, these loops. So let's start with this simple concept. I have drawn this picture of a donkey which is pulling a car. So the donkey is trying to go uphill. So if we think the donkey is the heart trying to push the blood and working against the blood pressure, this uphill will be your afterload. Let's say, for example, the blood pressure is 160 over 90. So the donkey has to kind of pull hard to go up on a steep cliff. So this is in the in terms of the heart is your afterload. So the donkey is carrying this cart full of boxes. So these are the, in this example, the be the preload. So more the preload, the more the donkey has to work, the more the donkey is going to get tired. Similarly in the heart, if the patient is congested, volume up, increase venous stasis, then, you know, more preload in the heart and more pressure on the heart. And let's add another thing to this. Let's say, for example, if the donkey is not going up and you start hitting it with the stick. So in this case, I'll label it as inotropes. Yes, this is going to make the donkey work a little more but if this monk if the donkey is still carrying this amount of preload the afterload is the same you are trying to make him go uphill and then just hitting it with the streak in this case we call it the inotropes you're just gonna tire him up and he might just faint or die so this is a, like a cartoon example of how things work in terms of the heart failure. So in picture two, if you look at this, the donkey is very happy. So you're taking away the preload. Now the, the donkey is going downhill. Let's say, for example, the blood pressure is 100 over 60. So it's not working against the high blood pressure. And just to add a little spice to the salad or the food, if you give the patient, if you give the donkey some digoxin, in this case, the skate, you know, roller skaters that the donkey is using, in the in case of the heart, it can be the digoxin, spironolactone, beta blockers. So those are all the good medications that you're trying to make the heart happy. So in this example, as I said, we've taken away the preload, which is the cart that it was pulling. We've taken away the uh, uphill, which is in case of the heart will be the afterload. We have taken away, or we might not even know, need the inotropes if we decrease the blood pressure or the afterload. So with this, we move on to, to the heart failure basics, the pressure volume loop. So as we all see, this is your pressure axis. This is your volume. And one thing that is very important is what we call in heart failure terminology ESPVR, which is end systolic pressure volume relation. So this is a, a line that we draw 
when we look at a lot of patients and we put their you know normal hemodynamics or the pressure volume loops on a chart and then we cross the one point with one line with these dots that you get what we call like an ESPVR or end systolic pressure volume relation and we'll break it down to see what exactly does that mean so let's look at the loop here so what's happening here is your isovolumetric contraction so you see that the pressure is going up the pressure is on this axis the pressure is going up but the volume remains the same so this is isovolumetric contraction then the aortic valve opens and then you have the ejection of the blood here the aortic valve closes so this is your systolic blood pressure in this case we'll take it as 120 and then as you go down you again see that here the volume is not changing volume is remaining the same the pressure is going down so it's called isovolumetric relaxation then comes a phase where the mitral valve opens and you have this active filling so this is the kind of the cardiac cycle that we see on the pressure volume loop but what's more important here is i'm just going to label it with blue this line here so this is your stroke volume with each beat the amount of blood that is being pumped out of the heart so let's see what happens if you have a normal patient normal healthy individual no heart failure or anything like that you give them lisinopril or hydralazine or amlodipine and you lower their blood pressure so let's say for example in this case we lower the blood pressure of the patient to 100 so we lower the blood pressure to 100 now we're going to draw the pressure volume loop for this patient the volume and systolic volume will go down as well just delete that here so the the loop will be something like this so this is the loop that you will get so what i want you to focus is what happens when you lower the blood pressure in a normal person and what happens to the stroke volume so i'm just going to draw it with orange so now you see the stroke volume go, goes up but what you have to understand is how much of the stroke volume has gone up i just shared this area this is only the amount of stroke volume or the benefit that will you will get if you lower the blood pressure from 20 120 to 100 in a patient who's got a normal heart so now come we come to the main theme of this talk and what you can take away from this talk is one line or these few min last minutes of this talk basically what happens in patients who are in heart failure they are working their heart is working on a flatter ESPVR or pressure volume loop so if I have to draw a line for their ESPVR it looks like like that it's more tilted toward the volume axis so if this is normal this is somebody with a heart failure so again this is ES PVR for a patient who's got a heart failure. So now let's draw the pressure volume loop for this patient. So for example, if this blood if the patient has for example a blood pressure of 120 here or let's say 100 
systolic is 100, their volumes will be high. And systolic volume will be high, be high so they are working more on the right side. So in these patients, lowering a little bit of blood pressure will give you a lot of benefit in terms of the stroke volume. So in this patient, the systolic blood pressure was 100. If you lower their blood pressure to, let's say, for example, from 100 to 80, as they are on a flatter curve, you'll cross the line here. I'm just gonna draw here. So this is the amount of blood pressure drop, but see how much of the stroke volume you get when you just lower the blood pressure a little bit. So this is the key. When we are doing a right heart cath, and when we are managing patients with a heart failure, we always say, target the afterload, target the afterload, that is to decrease the afterload. We know that once you decrease the afterload, the stroke volume goes remarkably up. Of course, there will be a situation where the patients are on the extreme right of this axis. These patients, when they are at extreme right, let's say for example here, their blood pressures are also low. And they are working on a very, very flat curve. And these patients are truly, these are the patients who are in trouble. Because now what you see is they have low blood pressure to begin with. You don't have any room to lower their blood pressure. And then their stroke volume is low as well. Their rejection is low. The only way you can move these patients towards the left or make their ESPVR go up either in this zone or all the way to the normal is by adding some inotropes. So bottom line, when you have a patient with heart failure, the key is after low reduction, after low reduction, after low reduction. Yes, you can diurese them, you can decrease their preload, you can decrease their end systolic and diastolic volume, left ventricular and diastolic volumes and you know, all those things. But when it comes to the management key, the after load reduction is the key in this way. I hope this will was helpful. You all have a very good day.